Hello, this is Dr. James Camp from Lee College in Baytown, Texas, and this is my last of four lectures on the endocrine system, Part D, the pancreas. The pancreas is an organ we've seen already in the digestive system. Uh, it's located posterior and inferior to the stomach um, and is a little unusual in that it is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland. Uh, as you recall from the digestive system, as an exocrine gland, it supplies neutralizing pancreatic juice um, as well as digestive enzymes such as trypsin and pancreatic amylase and pancreatic lipase. Uh, all of those are delivered to the duodenum of the small intestine uh, to kickstart the final stage of, of digestion. As an endocrine gland, however, which is what we're interested in today, the pancreas secretes a pair of hormones that regulate blood glucose. The exocrine cells of the pancreas, uh, as you may recall from our uh, digestive system days, are arranged in clusters called acini. And these form, if not a very regular structure, at least a, a nice pattern throughout the uh, throughout the pancreas. That pattern is interrupted every so often by these tiny, uh, somewhat lighter colored, uh, definitely less, uh, definitely less well organized collections of cells called islets. Uh, just a word on terminology. I have a lot of students who want to call these islets. It's Islet is a diminutive of the word island, okay? It means a small island. So just as we wouldn't say that I'm going to the island to go to the beach, you know, we, we don't say it's a pancreatic islet, it's an islet, okay? Um, these, in older textbooks, you'll see these called islets of Langerhans after the man who discovered them, uh, but in our ongoing efforts to remove dead people's names from uh, from biology, we're, we're now calling them uh, pancreatic islets. The pancreatic islets consist of two different types of cells. There are uh, alpha cells and uh, there are beta cells. Alpha cells secrete the hormone glucagon. Beta cells secrete the hormone uh, uh, insulin. Oh, here we go. Uh, there are also delta cells, which secrete a hormone called somatostatin, uh, and F cells, uh, which secrete a hormone called pancreatic polypeptide. The only two we're going to really focus on today are glucagon, which increases blood glucose levels uh, by telling the liver to break down glycogen into glucose and release that glucose into the blood. Uh, and insulin, which tells a number of organs, including the liver, to remove glucose from the blood and store it, and therefore uh, have the opposite effect, decrease blood glucose levels. That makes these a pair of antagonistic hormones, uh, antagonists even though they are produced by the same gland. Okay. Uh, as we just talked about, you know, when you look at the islets of the pancreas, you'll you'll see these acinar structures, sort of the, these two-tone, um, kind of you know dark, you know, one color on the outside, slightly uh, slightly different color on the inside. Um, things called called acini, and then every so often you'll see this, you know, the, an oddly shaped cluster of um, endocrine cells that uh, represents really well that kind of endocrine jumble we've been talking about through this whole series. Um, some of these cells will be alpha cells. Some of them will stain a little bit darker color or a little bit different color, and those will be your, your beta cells. Okay. Uh, the alpha cells produce glucagon, the beta cells produce insulin. Uh, in brief, the function of insulin is to decrease 
blood glucose, while the function of glucagon is to increase blood glucose. I like to say that if you have trouble remembering which of these two does what, uh, glucagon is released when the glucose is gone. Okay, so it's there to, to bring back blood glucose when the glucose is gone. Insulin is there when there's too much glucose and you need to decrease it a little bit. Okay, to put it a different way, uh, the stimulus for insulin is an increase in blood glucose and uh, its targets and its effects um, are generally to, to take glucose out of the blood and store it. Uh, its targets kind of fall into two categories, uh, the liver plus the skeletal muscles are going to uh, are going to store glucose as glycogen getting it out of the way and getting it out of the blood uh, the other category of, of target tissues are adipose tissues um, adipose tissues take a longer time to respond to insulin so um, Short-term spikes in blood glucose don't tend to produce fat, but um, uh, if your insulin is, is elevated for a longer period of time, you've had a very big meal or um, it's not going away with, with glycogen, um, we're going to cause the adipose tissues to start storing glucose as fat. And that makes the pattern here a very... Uh, a very simple negative feedback loop. Okay, we have an increase in blood glucose. Uh, the liver and the skeletal muscles store the glucose away. Uh, blood glucose goes back down. It's a, a negative loop. Glucagon is very similar, but just the opposite. The stimulus is a drop in uh, blood glucose. And... Uh, as far as I know, glucagon has a much simpler list of, of target organs. Primarily, uh, it acts on the liver. And here, the liver is going to um, break down glycogen to glucose uh, and therefore put more glucose back out into the blood, raise the blood glucose, and we take care of the problem. Once again, that makes it a nice negative feedback loop. All right, and that concludes my, my uh, hormone by hormone and gland by gland lectures on the endocrine system. I hope you've enjoyed them and learned something and uh, see you in class soon.